Are there daily activities you do to help you feel your best? Are these activities non-negotiable or do you only do them when you have the time to do it? What if you committed to a handful of self-care routines that helped you feel your best self? How would that change your mood and your energy on a daily basis? Today, I want to discuss the five self-care routines that have become part of my daily life by committing and staying disciplined to them on a daily basis They help me feel the, my best self each and every day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's the Bearded Man podcast with your favorite, the world's favorite bearded man, Bob Bay. Each week on these solo podcasts, I try to share some insight on topics to help you become the best version of yourself. Do I have all the answers? Absolutely not. This is just my beard of wisdom that I hope brings value to you. If you enjoy this episode at any moment in time, please screenshot this episode on whatever platform you are listening in on, post it to your IG story, and tag me at Bob Bay. That's B-O, three B's, four A's and a Y. Show the podcast on your IG story and let me know what the biggest takeaway was or what you enjoyed the most. And lastly, if you have not yet signed up for our weekly Bearded Wisdom newsletter coming in hot every Tuesday, please head over to itsthebeardedman.com to join. Uh, Weekly Wisdom delivered directly to your, your inbox. What else could you ask for? You can sign up today. The link is in the description of this podcast. And if you don't want to go there, you can go to itsthebeardedman.com to join. Thank you so much importance of self-care routines. How does one define self-care? According to our good friends at Wikipedia, which I know we all trust oh so much, self-care is any human regulatory function which is under individual control, deliberate, and self-initiated for the purpose of the maintenance of health and well-being. Key words here, the maintenance of health and well-being. I cannot stress the importance of prioritizing my health and well-being and how it has helped me not only get to where I am today, but allowed me to consistently create two podcasts a week for the past year. Whether, you know, even if you have zero interest of becoming a podcaster, you may have an interest in doing something in your life at a high level, whether that is being a chef a police officer, an engineer, a professor, a wait, a waitress, etc. We all need to feel our best in order to excel in any line of work. And the best way to ensure we are consistently putting in the effort to get there is by making sure we are prepared on a daily basis. I've also recognized that the only way for me to be of service to others in this world is by operating at my highest level. And the only way for me to do that To reach my highest level is by first prioritizing myself so that I can help and lead by example for others. That means getting clear on what daily activities make me feel great and staying disciplined to completing them every single day. No excuses, no if, ands, or buts. As we're going to discuss my self-care routines today, it is important to note that these are not the only routines people should consider. What helps me may not help you, and please feel free to give these a try and see if they do benefit you in any way. I think what is key is we must be very self-aware and, 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 and be able to recognize like, hey, I like this, and it makes me feel good, so I'm going to do more of it, or eh, maybe not my cup of tea, maybe I should try something else, regardless Finding the self-care routines that help us feel our best is extremely important. And how do we find them? By testing and trying all different ones until the right ones stick. Give yourself at least a full two to three weeks of consistently doing something before you mail it in and move on. It's going to be these activities, the one that we find help us feel our best self, that will help us feel like we've won our day and will ultimately help us prepare ourselves for that day. Not only that, they are the tests that we can hold ourselves accountable to completing once a day, knowing that it is helping us become 1% better. 
And it also just so happens to be International Self-Care Day this Saturday, July 24th. So the timing of this episode couldn't be more perfect. And I challenge all of you that on this Saturday, July 24th, you take some time to put some self-care into yourself and to focus on doing the things that help you feel your best. So my self-care routines. Number one, hydrate. You guys and gals ever heard of something called water? Or some know it as H2O. It's very important. It's unbelievable how good for you this liquid is. And it allows you to keep your body movie. Excuse me, body movie. What? It allows your body to keep moving at all hours of the day. And I highly recommend you trying it out because your boy is a big, big fan. Now, yes, I understand it may not have a flavorful taste, but... What I always remind myself of is that this is the most important liquid that I can consume for my body. Not only does our body need it for survival, but when you are hydrated on a daily basis, you genuinely feel better and more motivated for the day ahead. When you recognize the health benefits of drinking water, it is much easier to drink and to worry less about that taste because you understand it is going to help you feel your best self daily. Now, what I found to be the key to making sure that I'm drinking enough water in the day is picking certain parts of my day to fill up a cup and slam it back. So let's make slamming water the cool thing to do in 2021, okay? Sound good? The first thing that I do when I wake up at 5 a.m., I drink a full glass of water. Then again, when I get back from my morning run around 7.30 a.m., then again around 10 a.m., and for lunch, and a few more times in my day. By scheduling quote unquote water breaks into my day, which is honestly kind of pretty funny to admit, I'm holding myself accountable to making sure that I am drinking enough water within that day. By scheduling the water breaks though, like I said, accountability, key. They even sell one gallon water bottles and they have time markers, I think every two hours of the day for how much water you need to drink within the next two hours. Now, doing so, once again, holds you accountable. And I myself will be purchasing one of these after being inspired by seeing my mother use it over the last week while I was back in Massachusetts visiting family. Once I get into a rhythm of making this a daily routine, I was able to not only see the benefits, but start feeling the benefits immediately. We tend to wait until we feel thirsty to then get ourselves a cup of water. But if we're able to include it in our day, throughout the day, we don't ever feel dehydrated because we'll always have enough water running through our body. So self-care routine number one for myself, I do my best to make sure I'm drinking enough water throughout the day. By doing so, I genuinely feel better and more motivated for the day ahead of me. Number two, work out for 60 minutes. If you follow me on IG, you may think I'm a little cooked, since I post daily whatever workout I'm doing. It may be a run, lifting weights, hot yoga class, or maybe a combination of two of them. Regardless, at the bare minimum, I try to get in 60 minutes of sweat per day. Posting it to the gram not only holds me accountable for showing up, but I truthfully hope in doing so, it helps inspire others to get out there and get off their booty and do the same. Now, It took trial and error of me trying it in the morning or the midday and then later at night until I figured out that I love the morning sweat. It allows me to get the juices flowing before the day has even begun. And by the time I sit down to do a large portion of my work, I'm fully awake and alert because of the sweat. It got my body moving and grooving. Not only that, it clears my mind and allows me to disconnect from the world without any distractions. I bought music, and sometimes I use the quiet time to reflect and think. It is without a doubt one of the most crucial daily activities that really does help me feel my best self. And finding the workouts that you enjoy the most is really, really important. Whether it's cycling, hiking, running, surfing, walking, lifting weights, yoga, or taking a class, there are plenty of sweat options for all of you. When you find the sweat that you enjoy the most, it helps make it easier for us to show up on a daily basis to do it because not only do we enjoy it, we feel the benefits in our day from it. 
If the pandemic taught me anything, it was to be resourceful and make use of whatever I've got, right? Right when the gyms closed in March of 2020, I now had nowhere to get in my sweat. So what did I do? I used a bathroom towel as my mat. And I made use of a pull-up bar that we had at our house. I used our couch to do dips. I used our coffee table to do incline push-ups. And I just made it work. So even if all you have is a pair of shoes, you can find ways to get in that daily sweat. So I don't want to hear no excuses. When there's a will, there is a way. Put 60 minutes on the clock and get after it. Your mind and body will thank you. So self-care routine number two. I push to get 60 minutes of sweat per day. No excuses. Helps me to jumpstart my day by getting the blood moving and it prepares my mind and body for what is in front of me that day. Number three, read for 30 minutes. Now, I used to be one of those people that didn't read until I realized that the problem was not that I didn't like reading. I was just reading the wrong books. Adding in 30 minutes of reading per day has been an absolute game changer. It's allowed me to learn and better prepare myself for the person I am trying to become. Now, most of the books that I dive into fall under the categories of self-development, excuse me, autobiographies, spiritual and meditation, or even business. When you find those books that you are generally interested in reading or learning more about, it doesn't feel like a chore like it did when we were kids and we had to read certain books for school. You don't want or need spark, excuse me, you don't want or need spark notes when you're diving into pages that you actually care to read about. Now, I've heard from time and time again that people find it hard to read because they can't focus and people start calling or blowing up their phone and we live in this world where we are constantly accessible because of our cell phones. Here's the tip of the day. Put your phone on do not disturb, set the timer for 30 minutes, and do not look at your phone until the time is up. I'm not here suggesting that you go off the grid for an entire day, excuse me, for an entire day, just 30 short minutes. I promise that text, that email, or that call can wait. Now, I'd be lying not to admit that listening to podcasts has also been a huge way for me to learn and grow in the last couple of years. But even with that being the case, I've tried to make sure that I balance different styles of learning, reading versus listening. I think that as the world continues to evolve, audiobooks are only going to increase. And if that's the best way for you to read, then by all means, go for it. For me, there's something special about holding a physical copy and being able to toss the phone to the side and just focus on what is in my hands. Maybe one day I'll switch over you know, to audiobooks or have a Kindle, but that hasn't happened just yet. I just finished reading Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, and this baby is good. 10 out of 10 on the Bearded Man Review. So if you are looking for a new book to read, that is one I have to offer to you. If you're looking for other options, I do have a handful of books that I've listed on my website uh, of the books that I've read in the last couple of years. Any book that I've gotten through that I've found positively has impacted me, I've posted it to my website because from time to time again, I get people that reach out to me and say, Bearded Man, Bob A, what books do you recommend that I read? And so instead of just pinpointing a certain book or a few books that I've read that have impacted me the most, I shoot over this link and it has a database of all the books that I've really been impacted by in the last couple of years. So if you're looking for recommendation, head to itsthebeardedman.com, scroll to the resources section and you will find a section called books to read. And I hope you find one that suits you. So self-care routine number three, adding 30 minutes of reading into my day has helped me become a better version of myself. Once you find the right book categories to read, it no longer feels like a chore to pick a book to pick up a book, excuse me. Number 4, journal for 10 minutes. Now I feel very fortunate to have this podcast outlet to share my voice, my opinion and my two cents with the world. So if you're listening to these podcasts, thank you, thank you, thank you. It truthfully does not matter though how many people listen. Just the feeling of letting out to the world what I have to say helps my well-being. One of the most important self-care routines that was added in to my life within the past year is journaling. 
even with having a podcast platform, there are still areas in my life that I don't care to bore you guys and gals with. So then this becomes the outlet to do so. Not only that, journaling is something that I can commit to on a daily basis. Can't really pump out podcasts just yet on a daily basis, but we're going to get there soon enough. It's the one, it's one of the first things that I do in my day. And it's really, and it really does help me set positive intention for the day ahead by taking time to recognize the things that I'm grateful for or a positive experience from the past 24 hours or what I'm excited for, what my priorities are and the impact that I want to have on this world. This snaps me back into place regardless of how yesterday went or how I felt when I woke up this morning. When it comes to journaling, there is no wrong or right way to do it. Let me say that one more time. Because this is what holds people back from doing it. They think, you know, there's a certain formula or they have to follow a certain template. No, 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 no. When it comes to journaling, there is no wrong or right way to do it. Now, as I've said, I think it's a game of trial and error until you find what works best for you. I personally like the five question format style that I just discussed because it puts up guardrails for what I should write about. Now, there have been days when I pull out a piece of paper, I pull out my notes app, and I just flow with whatever's on top of my mind, and I just let it out. And 10 times out of 10, it makes me feel 110% better because I've used this as an outlet to let out whatever is brewing inside of me. If journaling has taught me anything, it is that emotions pass through us. You You may be feeling on top of the world today, or deep down in a hole that feels impossible to climb out of it. All you need to do is wait, because eventually you will neutral out again. This too shall pass. Sometimes the best way to get out of that neutral, excuse me, sometimes the best way to get to that neutral position is to let out on paper and express whatever you're feeling. Nobody needs to read it or hear about it. It is only for you. So self-care routine number four. 10 minutes of journaling per day not only sets good intention for the day ahead, but it also provides an outlet for me to let out whatever emotions are running through my mind at the moment, for good or for bad. Last one, number five, meditate for 10 minutes. I've talked about meditating many of many times on this podcast, not only in solo episodes, but also with guests who have expressed uh, how meditation has positively impacted their lives. There are many self-care routines that I have read or heard about from high-level performing people, and this one seems to be the theme for most. Meditation has provided daily stillness in my day that allows me to get recentered and focused on the present moment. It is so easy to get anxious or overwhelmed thinking about all the work that needs to get done to get us to where we really want to be. By doing so, We are only hurting ourselves because we're holding ourselves back from focusing on what we can control right now, which is the 24 hours that is ahead of us. I meditate for 10 minutes every morning after I work out to reground myself in the moment and to process whatever is on my mind right now. Similar to journaling, the stillness from the meditation realigns me on who I am, what I want to do. And it fires me up like a shot of espresso to get after it after, me, after the meditation has ended. Once my eyes open and I've completed 10 minutes of stillness, I am off to the races and ready to crush the day ahead of me. Now, people hesitate to try meditation because they don't know what they're doing or there are so many thoughts that pass through their mind as they sit that they get anxious and they feel like it's just not working. My advice, lean into it. All you need to do is sit and follow your breath. Anytime a thought comes up to mind, acknowledge it and let it pass. Once you do that, the next thought may appear and and allow that one to pass through as well. What I've found to be very helpful in meditating is meditating outside and just listening to all the sounds around me. The birds chirping, the feeling of the warmth from the sun, the passing of a car, the trash truck completing its weekly pickup. Make it a game of acknowledging as many sounds as possible that you hear, and that will help you stay present on the now, which is the entire point of meditation. Once again, there is no wrong or right way to meditate. It is a practice that takes years of work. 
like anything, the more reps you put in, the better you'll get. So self-care routine number five, 10 minutes of meditation helps clear the mind and sets good intention for the day. When we refocus on the present moment, we are only worrying about what is in front of us today. To recap, it is extremely important to find self-care routines that help you feel your best. When When we find the ones that we enjoy and benefit us the most, we must find time in our day or in our week to commit to these routines. The only way to find which ones work best for us is to be willing to test and try new routines. Five self-care routines that help me feel my best. Number one, hydrate. I do my best to make sure that I'm drinking enough water throughout the day. By doing so, I genuinely feel better and more motivated for the day ahead of me. Number two, work out for 60 minutes. I push to get 60 minutes of sweat per day. No excuses. It helps me jumpstart my day by getting the blood moving and it prepares my mind and body for what is in front of me. Number three, read for 30 minutes. Adding 30 minutes of reading into my day has helped me become a better version of myself. Once you find the right book categories to read, it no longer feels like a chore to pick up a book. Number four, journal for 10 minutes. 10 minutes of journaling per day not only sets good intention for the day ahead, but it also provides an outlet for me to let out whatever emotions are running through my mind in the moment, for good or for bad. And number five, meditate for 10 minutes. 10 minutes of meditation helps clear the mind and sets good intention for the day as well. When we refocus on the present moment, we are only worrying about what is in front of us today. Challenge for the listeners. Think about the one self-care routine that you have always wanted to test and try, but you have come up with every excuse in the book to not do it. That ends today. Starting today, I challenge you to go seven days straight of trying that new routine out. Don't make up any excuses. Do it, do it, do it. Reassess how you feel after a week and consider if this is something you want to continue to do moving forward. Questions from the BMC. That is the Bearded Man community. If it's your first time listening to this podcast, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are now enrolled into the BMC. It costs you $0 per year. Anybody's welcomed and you're now part of the club. I will send you a patch in the mail. You could put it on your shirt. It'll look cool. And you'd be like, yeah, I'm part of the BMC, the Bearded Man community. Let's go. Chill. All right. Nat Jean. Uh, submitted and just said nutrition. I'm going to run with that. Nutrition is extremely important to our well-being. Similar to testing and trying routines to see what works best for you, I think it is the same for nutrition. Now, at a high level, we know that eating fruits is better than eating a bag of chips. The key is that we need to test and try adding clean and healthy foods into our diet and see how differently you feel. Now, I credit Eating a clean diet keeps my mind clear. It fills me up with energy for the day ahead. And it allows me to stay busy from the moment that I wake up and the moment I go to sleep. If I was not feeling myself the right foods, I don't think I'd be able to operate at the speed of which I do. Nutrition is crucial to our overall well-being. Test and try different foods and, and uh, diets and see what works best for you because I do believe that not one diet fits everybody else. We have to see how the foods react to our body and then make a decision of, do we keep adding that into our diet or do we not? Orlando, uh, he said, setting boundaries with roommates who don't share similar routines or lifestyles. This is super important. One thing is for sure, we can control other people's lifestyles, but we damn well can create boundaries to ensure that they don't interfere with ours. Now, I have a friend of mine who is extremely fit, eats a clean diet, works out daily, watches his alcohol consumption, and overall is a go-getter. Now, although I have never met his roommate, he's told me about him very often that he's the opposite. He doesn't work out. He eats takeout daily. He drinks most nights. He's literally the complete opposite of my friend. Now, even though they are opposites, they respect each other and they understand that it is their own individual decisions to live the lifestyle that they are living. So I think the key is communication. 
Tell your roommates exactly how you are feeling and do it in a professional and appropriate manner if they are overstepping the boundary. Be calm and don't go off on them. It's all about how you communicate and just keep a calm voice the way, when you do communicate with them. Let them know what your priorities are, what your boundaries might be, and what they can do to help ensure that they don't interfere with what you are trying to do. Now, I think most people will respect and honor your request within reason. Orlando, if that does not happen and they still disrespect what you have put out to them based on boundaries and and ways they, they can help you become your best version of yourself, please feel free to DM me as I'd love to help and get you through to that next that next step. Um, so I think that's the key, just communication. Uh, lastly, Emma, motivation to do all those self-care things. Two-step process. First, schedule the self-care routines into your schedule so that you don't spend any time of your day debating when and where you are going to do the thing. When you don't schedule it in, it is very easy to not do it because the day kind of rolls on by. You do a couple other things. You say yes to that, say yes to that, and all of a sudden, you never had time to get in that self-care routine. Scheduling is very, very important. Second, take it one routine at a time. I, when I wake up every morning, I'm not allowing myself to get anxious or, or overwhelmed thinking, Damn, I got to complete four routines before the end of the day. How am I going to do this on top of everything else I need to do? I just take it one at a time. It also allow, you know, I also allow myself to skip a day if necessary and to not beat myself up, not beat myself up if I do. The one rule that I live by is something called the two day rule. You are not allowed to miss back to back days, but you can miss one day. So if you need to skip Monday workout, get back on a Tuesday. And if for some reason you got to skip Wednesday, get back on a Thursday. But never allow yourself to skip Thursday and Friday because it easily will tumble. When you miss two days in a row, it's like, "Ah, I can miss three, I can miss four. A week goes by, a month goes by. And so then it becomes harder to stay disciplined. So I think adding the two-day rule allows us that to be very disciplined over the long term. And lastly, Emma, don't be too hard on yourself, okay? If you're trying, that's all that matters. Uh, we did not have a pod review of the week, so if you'd like to be next week pod review, please head over to the iTunes podcast app. Leave me a one-sentence review or one-word review of what you are thinking about this podcast. I love taking the time to kind of shout out the people that leave the review, and uh, it's greatly appreciated. So please, please, please head over to the iTunes podcast app if you'd like to be the pod review of the week. Um, as I said in the beginning of this episode, uh, we, we're firing back up on the Beard Wisdom newsletter. Started this last year, and I kind of dropped the ball after six weeks. Um, this week was the third one. So if you are not yet already signed up and you are trying to get some Beard of Wisdom into your inbox every single Tuesday, head to itsthebeardedman.com and sign up. You can also hit the link in the description of this episode, and it should directly bring you there. Weekly Wisdom delivered directly to your inbox. What else could you ask for? And uh, I hope I can bring some value to you guys and gals throughout your week. If you enjoyed this podcast today, all that I ask is please screenshot this episode, post it to your IG story, tag me at Bobby, that's B-O, three B's, four A's and a Y. Share out the podcast on your IG story. Let me know what the biggest takeaway was, what the biggest learning was, or just share it out with your IG community and let them know they got to listen into It's the Beard and Man podcast, baby. They better crank up that V. Let's go. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I had a great week off last week. It was very um, important to step away and have a break and spend some great time with the family. But ultimately, I got back uh, to LA and I am very inspired, very motivated, and very excited to just get back into the rhythm and pump out some high quality content. So thank you so much to those that are out there listening. It it truthfully means the world to me and your feedback is always so appreciated. So thank you for tuning in. We got plenty more podcasts on the way. That is episode 109, self-care routines, five daily activities to help you feel, or excuse me, to help me feel my best. And that's it for today. It's the Bearded Man Podcast. See ya.